be Whoa! Soft. Did you not smell? Of course you didn't smell it. Smell that. The brands that you sometimes see on Shark Tank, some of them, I'm just like, that's genius. Brilliant. And then sometimes I'm like, I don't see a market for that. Though nevertheless, very impressive because being a business owner, that's a huge. But today I have purchased a whole bunch of different Shark Tank products. We're gonna test them out and see what the deal actually is. Are they worth buying? Do they look as cool in person as they do on the show? Inquiring minds need to know. If you like this series, you wanna see more of them, make sure you give this a thumbs up so I know and subscribe. New videos here every single Saturday and that way you're notified so you don't miss out. Okay, so caffeinated, that's step one. And now we're gonna start with a brand called Burlap and Barrel. This is a company that was started by two entrepreneurs that really wanted to make an impact in the whole food system, specifically around the spice industry and just building this very traceable, transparent, equitable supply chain movement. And so they work with small farms all over the world and they procure these very unique spices and uh, like single origin spices that they call it that you wouldn't really be able to find anywhere else in, in this case, in the States, but really in North America in general. They were actually offered a deal from Shark Tank, which they tried to like go back with and they were immediately shut down. So I don't think they ended up getting a deal on Shark Tank, though they are still in business. They've created like a Shark Tank bundle. They are available, I think, on Amazon as well. And so I bought their Fundamentals collection because there were a couple of spices that I was very interested in that um, seemed to be favorites of the sharks. So you can see like on each of the bottles where that particular spice is from. And then you can see on the lid, you know, they're talking about their their farmers and the partnerships they built with them and the, the sourcing and um, more information on the drying process, like all these things. So um, we're gonna smell the one that I'm the most excited about actually. Haven't opened it yet. And it is the Royal Cinnamon. This comes from Vietnam. This is something that um, people are really excited about and it's one of their most popular ones. Ooh, they have tasting notes on the side. Oh, this is exciting. So the tasting notes are brown butter, buckwheat honey, and orange peel. Very nice. And I figured the best way to smell these and obviously also taste them would be to compare them to the bagged variety that I currently have in my kitchen. So I have here, this is what I use, and this is this one. So before we do anything else, let's, let's smell them first. Smells cinnamony, then... Whoa, it smells like this one was just sort of kind of near this one, like a distance and therefore picked up some of its scent along the way, but nowhere near as potent in terms of scent. Wow, this one just hits different. It's got so much depth to the smell. It smells fresh is the best way I can describe this in terms of scent. I can definitely smell that sort of orange peel element to it. It smells warm, it smells deep and rich and full. And this one, like in compare, like I can't even smell it now in comparison. And so I'm gonna test it on its own and then I'm gonna test it on top of, one of the things I like to do, especially around now, is I like to sprinkle it on apples because the apples are really fresh around here anyway. You know, apple picking and all that. So I'm gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on some apple slices and um, we're gonna taste test that too. First, just want like a little hint of it. It doesn't really look very different, I, I guess, at least from here. Doesn't taste like anything. And then this, ugh! It's too much. Don't eat my, that much cinnamon. Whoa, like it's just, it's pure cinnamon. So I mean, it's not like, wow, that tastes delicious, but like you can taste it. That's wild, that's wild. Okay, let's put it on some apple. While I cut this up, I'm gonna talk about the other way in which we are gonna be testing out these spices. Because I know for my American friends, it is close to Thanksgiving. And one thing I know about Americans is that Thanksgiving is very important. And so I thought I would test out some of the spices versus the bag variety on a turkey. So what we did is I took the turkey and I divided it in half and I tried to pick out spices that I had in both the bagged as well as the burlap and barrel spices. So I chose paprika and garlic. And it's like this, um. What is it? What is it called? Here it is. It's purple stripe garlic. It's also from Vietnam. Tasting notes of brown butter, toasted hazelnut, and asafoetida. Asafoetida? Asafoetida? I'll put it up on the screen. I don't know what that is, but apparently it tastes like that. So I mix that. Oh, and also um, the peppercorns. I 
also did the peppercorns because these are also really, really popular. So I mixed up the spices for one side as well as on the back side, and then I just basically patted it on each side of the turkey. I love how, by the way, I'm also cutting it up just out of habit for like a child because that's what I do with apples. So I'm just cutting it into these little pieces. <laughs> There we go. So anyway, I patted it on both sides and then cooked it up. So we are gonna be tasting that. Let's try and do a light, a light dusting. On top versus, I'm so scared it's just gonna come out in a big like, you know, regular apple. I didn't put up enough cinnamon on it. Okay, cinnamon and apple. Okay, now the barrel and burlap and barrel. Wow, it really hits you with the the smell of it, I need to put more on. Could you imagine this on the stove to like scent the house with like apple or orange peel or like just like Christmassy fall, I don't know. It'd be amazing, amazing. So the biggest difference that I am noting is the scent is like a huge one. Second to that is that the bagged variety tastes very um, like grainy. I'm trying to think of the word for it, like flat. This is definitely better and it's more cinnamony, but that's like the biggest difference that I'm noting. That is so interesting. Let's see if Kristen tastes the difference. Christopher, do you wanna come taste some apple? He said sure. Okay, smell. Okay. Smell. You can't smell the difference? I can sort of smell cinnamon and apple on both of them, but. Now take a bite. Can you smell cinnamon like in the kitchen? Kinda. This guy in his nose. Yeah. In case you're new here, Christopher just can't smell very well. Try that one. Okay. Which one do you like better or do you notice a difference? Notice a ton of difference, mm -hmm. to be honest. I think this one may be more cinnamony. That was the difference for me. So the first one I gave you was the bagged. Second one was the jarred. Yeah. Biggest difference to me was like, you can smell the the difference and the first one I felt had a very like flat, like a hard taste to it. This felt more rounded. You have a much more sensitive palate than I do. Can you smell that at all? I can, yeah. Smell that one. Okay, I think I smell a difference there. Yeah, the no. smell is very different. Do you want to try tasting it like just as is? That's what I did. That one. Okay, straight on their own, I notice a big difference. Should we pull out the the, the turkey then? I can get the turkey. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's get the turkey. Okay. Which brings me into the next thing while we also taste the um, the flavor notes of the two. Cause like, again, the, the smell was really powerful, especially in this garlic. It smells incredible. Wow, it's so fresh. This to me was like way more about whoo than um, the cinnamon, if that makes sense. So we've roasted it, we've done the whole thing, now on to the next product. <laughs> and that brings me to the Mighty Carver. This was started by a husband and wife duo. They had had Thanksgiving and had all their family around. Their grandfather had recently passed and he had done all the carving for their turkey. And so no one really wanted to go ahead and start that process, but they had been all sort of reminiscing on earlier that day where they had all been really excited to cut down trees with their chainsaw. And then one thing led to another and they came up with this. So it's basically an electric carver shaped like a chainsaw. So they ended up accepting a deal with one of the sharks and they had shared um, in the 12 months prior to filming Shark Tank, they had sold about 8,500 units. And now as of today, they are worth about $8 million. The power of Shark Tank. That is just wild. So I put it together. Basically there are two, I'm not gonna press the button yet. There are two serrated edges um, that clip into this piece right here, which makes it fun. It's an electric car for though. And then when you press the button, these kind of go back and forth and it's a serrated edge. They showed pictures of it being used on um, bread or melon, like outside of just turkey, there are other uses. But obviously we need to see this in action. Oh my gosh, it's scary. It's so much louder than I expected. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. The power I feel. This is how it feels to cut down a tree? Wow, this is electric. I'm unstoppable. Okay, but actually I'm kind of scared. Christopher, yes. do, you want to, do you want to carve a turkey? Here we have the bird and all our glory. And I wanna note something very interesting that I found after taking this out of the oven. This is a side with the bag spices, and this is the side with the burlap and barrel spices. So you can see they 
blackened very quickly, which is just really interesting. I don't know if it's because they're more fresh. I don't know. But now, Christopher, do you want to carve it? I've never in my life carved a turkey. And I just really just want to stand here menacingly with this chainsaw. I don't actually want to carve. This may be better for cutting a boneless breast or thigh or something, but let's give it a shot. How'd it feel? Cuts through like butter. It looked like it cut through like butter. Yeah, this is where knife fork would be helpful. Now what? I prefer a knife for this job. This big plastic guard makes it difficult to turn. What I'd like to do is use a chef knife, okay. butcher this down, and then use this to like slice, slice. beautiful slices of uh, full turkey breast. Let me know how you carve a turkey at Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. Do you have a specific person do it? That's like a tradition. This is a messy job. This is absolutely disgusting. This, this may not be a uh, camera friendly yeah, job. Yeah, no. Okay, hold on, we'll skip this part. Okay, this is much more civilized. So you can see this is the one with the burlap and barrel and then this is the one with the bagged. So we need to taste test it obviously, but also carve. nice slices. It's more dexterous than I imagined, both in using with one hand and in getting down to the bottom, like it's separating mm -hmm. nicely. It does have a very satisfying chainsaw sound. <laughs> like, I, like the old classic electric turkey carvers, I don't think sounded quite like that. I don't know what they did to make it sound like a chainsaw, but I like it. It's fun. I think that's what it, it is. It's a it's toy. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, is it going to be better than a knife for carving up a turkey? No, but it's fun. Yeah. It's a conversation it, it's, piece. It's a novelty item to bring out at a special occasion, which is fun. I yeah. like that. Okay, so now we need to taste uh, test. So that's the burlap one. Yep. Okay. And the regular. Standard. Okay. Cheers. You took all my skin. I took, I took all of it. To me, this tastes better because I can taste the spices more, but it's not a huge like wow moment that I was expecting. I just tasted this, just a piece of skin by itself on each. And I that time I noticed the difference. As you say, it's not a hit you in the face moment, but it is subtly different, just a more flavorful spice. It is. Yeah. I think that's that's all it is to it. Like it's not gonna be the big aha wow moment that I was expecting. Mm -hmm. It tastes better to me than this one does. Well, thank you so much for- and now um, we have turkey. Come, now we have some turkey. <laughs> now you need to make some lunch. Yeah. All right, turkey's been processed. You can see the stock is already cooking. So now we can go on to the next product, which is the other, you can't even see it. It's this little pan right here because we're gonna be trying out the fry away cooking oil solidifier. This was started by a woman named Laura because she was looking for a way to enjoy all of her, you know, fried foods and things that she loved doing, but she didn't want to see all of the oils and things going into the garbage or going down the drain. So she came up with this. So this is basically a plant-based product that you sprinkle into hot oil and it's going to solidify it so that you can put it into like a compost or something. Apparently you can also use it to turn it into like a, like a candle wax or something. But once you are done with whatever oil you're using, you can put this in and then get rid of it more effectively. This comes with two packets. So each one will do eight cups of oil. So 16 in total. I have some oil on the stove there and we're going to uh, put this in. It's oil that we've already used and we've used over again. So gotta get rid of it. Let's give this a go. All right, this feels hot enough. It's getting a little bubbly on the surface a bit. So um, I'm gonna call it. So I'm gonna turn off the heat and then we're gonna sprinkle this guy in. And honestly, it kind of feels like breadcrumbs. Oh, it's like little, um, like little flakes. They kind of look like that. Okay. They're all just kind of sinking to the bottom here. Keep doing this until it's done. Ta-da! Okay, now we have to wait until this completely cools down and it should turn into like a solid. So um, just let that do its thing. So while that does its thing, let's go on to the next one, which is a snack. The company is called Pipcorn Snacks. It was started by a brother and sister and they found these like 
types of kernels that produce a smaller popcorn, like a little baby one. It is supposed to be so much more delicious and has a ton more fiber in it. It was actually one of Oprah's favorite things. They have a lot of different flavors. So I, I, you know, I got them all. They ended up getting a deal on Shark Tank, I think with Barbara. And I couldn't find a lot of information on it other than like they're still in business. They've expanded the number of snacks that they do. They used to be called Pip Snacks, I think. So now it's Pipcorn Snacks, but obviously we need to test them. And when I say all the flavors, I mean all the flavors. Oh, where do we start? First of all, branding, 10 out of 10. I love the packaging that they have done here. It still gives you that whole like, look how good I am for you because I'm popcorn, kind of a vibe with the top of the heirloom popcorn. But you can see at the bottom here what the different flavors are and you can really easily tell them apart, which is important, or at least it's important to me. Now I'm a little sad because these are all gluten-free and I have none of my gluten-free girls here. They're all on mat leave, but I will share this with them later. So I guess I should start with the actual popcorn. This is sea salt. Oh, oh, small. Okay. I know you're thinking in your head, you're like, how, how small is it? Teeny tiny. Like, look how little they are. Just small. But apparently because they're small, they're not going to get stuck in your teeth at all and stuff like that. That's some good popcorn right there. It's buttery. It's salty. I really like that. Wow. So they have the mini popcorn, a couple of different flavors. They also have these like cheese balls, which I assume is also made of popcorn. These are made of ground cornmeal, different. So the cheese balls are not popcorn. We have popcorn and we have popcorn. <laughs> what about these things, which I thought were really cool. Cinnamon and sugar twists, yellow corn, corn flour. So they're made of corn. So still within the popcorn family, but different. I wanna try these twists. They're not as twisty as I was hoping. Like, look at, look at them here. They look like little pastas or whatever. And then, eh, it's not what I wanted. Not bad. Very light, but very crunchy. It's not as cinnamon and sugary as I was kind of hoping. Let's try another one. Let's try the cheese balls. Real cheddar or white cheddar? It's not even a question. I wanna open up the white cheddar. Are these gonna be like, like Cheetos? The consistency is very, very Cheeto-y. is not as um, intense, like hit you in the face cheese though. It looks like those, um, Oh, there's a there's a cereal. I can't think of the name. Well, there's a cereal that looks like this. It's more corn forward. That's the difference with these. They're more corn forward, a little bit more crunchy than like the light airy che like Cheetos, you know? I mean, Christopher to taste that season with me. Christopher, do you wanna try some snacks? I have all the snacks. Okay, while well, you top up the water content on here, I tell you about this. Yes, please. This is called Pipcorn Snacks and they are made from heirloom mini corn kernels. Basically, what I'm to understand, this is a different variation of actual popcorn kernels that are higher in fiber and taste better. Artisanal. And artisanal, artisanal, fancy. Got it. Yeah. So I have sea salt because I feel like that's the best way to start. Mini popcorn. Min yes, that's the whole thing. It's mini, it's little. Look how baby they are. Okay. They're just little. Crunchier than your standard popcorn. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. This is like crunchy throughout. Good corn flavor. I mean, that's a good, that's a really good popcorn. I find sometimes with the sea salt popcorn, especially bag like this, I tend to stay away from it because it tastes so bland. Like there's no flavor to it, even if it's like salt. This tastes buttery yeah. and salty, but not too much. I don't know if I get a lot of butter. I, I was just thinking, I was just thinking I would toss that in some melted butter. White cheddar cheese balls. Mm -hmm. This is all just corn. Yes, like obviously this is not popcorn, but it's like corn flour, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Those are interesting. I could get into these. Yeah? Yeah, these I like. There's an underlying sweetness and I think that's the corn mm -hmm. and it's neat and it's good with the salty. I could take maybe a bit more cheddar flavor, but I like the whole mix that they got going here. This is good. It's like a fancier Cheeto. It's a little like the, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's a little, it's more crunchy. Mm -hmm. It's not as like hit you in the face cheddar, but it has like the, the, that whole grain kind of vibe to it that I like, I kind of like. I wish it had more white cheddar on it though. That was my I thing. I think it could use it, but it's good. I like the cinnamon sugar twists. You tell me what you think of that while I open up the mini popcorn truffle flavor. Truffle needs to be Whoa. Subtle. Did you not smell? Of course you didn't smell it. Smell that. It hits you in the face, the truffle smell. Whoa. Surprisingly, my favorite was sea salt out of all of them. 
What? There that is, is there truffle. There's gotta be truffle oil in there. Dried truffle. Black truffle salt. Wow, though. Yeah, that's really tasty. Yeah, if you like truffle, like yeah. this hits you with truffle flavor. What I'm impressed by, now I, I assume this isn't like a big, like Lay's owned company or something like that. Like having this many different SKUs is pretty impressive. Like yeah. this is, this is, a lot of variety. Well, for I a think small they, I think they just started with just the popcorn, and okay. then they got to deal with the, with one of the sharks, and they've okay. expanded. Right. But I like the like the, all the labeling is really nice. Okay, one more, one more. I want to try the spicy cheddar one. I don't smell anything. I don't know why I said I can't <laughs> smell anything, and then gave it to you to smell. They look very similar to the other ones. They have heat. That's too heat for me. That's good Tabasco flavor. That's uh, they've got that kind of vinegary tang. Yeah of Tabasco, which they, they nailed. That's cheddar, right? Eh? I'm not getting any of that. It's just drowned out by the Tabasco, but I mean, it's tasty. Yeah, if you like, I say if you like spicy, but I'm sure if you like spicy, these are not gonna be spicy enough for you, but they do hit the nail on the head with the whole Tabasco thing. Yeah, no I mean, cheddar, it's though. Tabasco flavored. It's not super spicy, but compared to like, Remember this, was it spicy crab or something like that? There were chips that were supposed Pringles. to be like extra hot spice. There was nothing. These are hot. Overall, I think these are great. You know, it's a, a healthier option. I think a lot of Is them it, yeah. are, they're whole grains. It's less fat, I suppose. And um, some of them say baked, not fried. I think they've done a great job. And a lot of these are really tasty. My favorite is the sea salt. Which one's yours? I was trying to decide between the white cheddar cheese. No, actually, to be honest, and this is atypical, but these cinnamon sugar twists, I wouldn't normally go for the sweet ones. These are really good. But, really? but the white cheddar cheese balls are good as well. That's so interesting, because that was the one where I was like, it's not enough, like not enough cinnamon and sugar. Mm. That's probably why you mm. like them, because they're just, they give you just an, enough to taste the cinnamon and sugar, mm -hmm. but it's not yeah. enough, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, well, thank you for taste testing yeah, with thank me. Thank you. This is, this is good. They did a good job. If you can find these, I think they're great. And then the other product I wanted to try is the brand Bam, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, Bambooey. I think it's Bambooey. And basically these are washable paper towels is what I'm getting from this. So basically you can reuse these paper towels made of bamboo over and over again, up to a hundred times, I think they said, before they just sort of start falling apart. They don't rip, they don't tear. You can wash, they're machine washable. According to the package, the 30 bambooey sheets that it comes with replaces four, 429 paper towel roll. That's specific. So I got their little duo. This is supposed to be like Swiffer dry cloth, substitutes basically. It has little scrubby dots on it. So I'm gonna attach it to my Swiffer and see what it picks up. Probably lots. And the Swiffer duster replacers have 15 sheets that have 1500 single uses. Well, let's open this up. I guess one of my questions is, now I understand for the purposes of wrapping it and keeping it safe, I'm sure this would be very difficult given the shape, but given that it's a very environmental play, wrapping it in plastic was a decision. And also my other question is, what do you do with it when it is done? Can you put them in like a compost or something? Do they just disintegrate? It doesn't say, I will find out though. My biggest question is that the whole thing with paper towels for me, I don't use them that often. I typically use cloths, but when I do use them, the great thing about them is that they're on a roll. It kind of keeps them in one space, makes them different from cloths. And for this one, this starts on a roll, but then I guess after that, you're gonna have to just make like a like a pile of them. So you're gonna have to dedicate a drawer or like a, like a bin or something to these paper towels, which is just not as, I don't know, easy. Okay, so let's look at these here. So they're very large. I would say like they, they do cover a nice um, amount of space. They feel nice and thick, like a cloth. I can understand the whole not ripping thing. I have these like Swedish dish cloth things, but these things are thicker than these. So I'll use these quite often in the kitchen because they have sort of that scrubby roughness to them. So they're great for picking up grime off countertops and stuff, but these are obviously a lot bigger in terms of space. Ooh, actually thinking of that, can I wash them with my towels? Do I have to wash them by themselves? Ooh, do not use in dryer. 
Oh, don't like that. So basically, if you used one of these per day, which is not how I would do it, but let's say you do, then you end up with 30 sheets that if you use one a day, you have to hang to dry, lay to dry on a countertop, like, that would be very annoying to me, especially if you have cloths that kind of look like this a little bit. You have to kind of go through all your towels and find these, or you'd have to put them in a bag to like separate them out from everything. So to me, how I would use it is I would just take one at a time until it disintegrates, and then I would get another one. Assuming it disintegrates. You know what, we're gonna find that out. Okay, so I went on their website. They have no information on what you do with it. It was wasn't until I went into other blogs and they basically said that these aren't compostable. So basically you just wear them down until they're shreds and then you put them in the garbage. I'm getting mixed messages in terms of the actual, I guess, benefits of this product. I feel like they're going in the right direction, but to me, I would love something that you can roll up again very easily or Quite honestly, I would just get more towels because I use those all the time. I will test how these sweepers do, but like honestly, I would just limit the amount of paper towels you use and focus instead on using reusable cloths. But let's go try it with a duster just to see. Okay, I have my Swiffer. Also, you can see, oh, maybe you can anyway, the little dots right here on the fabric itself. Now I do feel like I have to explain my Swiffer a little bit because it's, it's very short and I have a reason for it. Because my children love a Swiffer. So I cut out the middle one, I, meaning I didn't install it, and made it short. And now every once in a while, Connor or Luke or someone will just take it and like glide it around the house for me, just for funsies. So um, yeah, toddler hack. So let's see, wait, am I using this wrong? So I was gonna say, I was like, this isn't gliding at all. That's for scrubbing side. Got it. Okay, I don't really need to scrub right now, so I'm gonna swap it over. Hang on. All right, there we go. Now let's see if it picks up stuff off my floor. <laughs> All right, what do you got? Not a ton, but I like my floors aren't clean. It's just, it, I guess they're not dusty. I don't know. There's got to be something on my floor that it'll pick up. All right, it is picking up some stuff, um, mostly on the one edge there. That's weird. So I mean, I guess that's nice if you want reusable Swiffer floor things, but then you have to rinse them and lay them out to dry. So if you're willing to do that, then this it was a good investment. However, the paper towels, I'm just not on board for. So let me know what you think though. Update, the oil is doing stuff. Seems to be solidifying at the bottom as well as kind of on the top. So I'll see how long this takes to complete. All right, there it is, solidified. So let's see how it does in scraping it out. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, look at this. Look what I did. Oh my gosh, it's entirely solid. I'm gonna put it in my compost bag, which is 100% compostable. Oh, it's goopy, it's goopy. Ugh. Ugh. Bit stuck onto the bottom here, huh? Mm, I'll show you. So you can see there's like a little bit stuck at the bottoms here and it says don't, um, don't try and scrape it off, just heat the pan a little bit and that'll just come off easily, which I can only assume that it will. So I mean like, yeah, this does work <laughs> really well uh, if you're not reusing your oil for anything, that might be a, an easy way to dispose of it. Would you ever buy any of these products or have you bought them before? Let me know in the comments section below and also if there are any other like Shark Tank products that you've seen recently that we should test out next, let me know. If you like these kinds of videos, I will link the full playlist so you can go and check them out and uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up so I know we can kind of continue this as a series. Subscribe if you haven't already, new videos here every single Saturday so you don't miss out and uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic, fantastic weekend. I will see you guys on the next one.